Acting Prime Minister, the Honorable Santia Bradshaw, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel the Honorable Jeffrey Bostick, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS, Her Excellency Ms. Linda Tagliolatella, senior government officials, especially invited guests, members of the media, a very good morning. And thank you for joining us here at the Grantley Adams International Airport for the ceremony to mark the arrival of more than 70,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which have been kindly donated by the U.S. government. And now we will have welcome remarks by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Ms. Simone Rudder. Thank you, Ms. Lord. Thank you. The Honorable Santia Bradshaw, Acting Prime Minister. The Honorable Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, Minister of Health and Wellness. Her Excellency, Ms. Linda Tagilatele, Ambassador of the United States to Barbados. Dr. Kenneth George, Chief Medical Officer, Permanent Secretary Cheryl Aline, and other officials from the Ministry of Health. Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand and Major David Clark, co coordinators of the Barbados National Vaccination Program for COVID-19. Media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you this morning to the ceremony for the arrival in Barbados of the Pfizer vaccines donated by the Government of the United States of America. Today's shipment of just over 70,000 doses, as we've just heard, is actually the first tranche of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccinations that Barbados will be receiving in the context of the contribution by the United States of America of almost or over 5.5 million doses of the vaccine to the member states of the Caribbean community. It is often said that COVID-19 is a global pandemic which requires a global response. And we are therefore very happy that here in Barbados, we are able to receive the support of the United States in this particular area to our efforts and programs to manage the scourge of COVID-19. The United States has been a long-standing partner for Barbados and we, for Barbados and the countries of the region, and Barbados accords the highest priority to our bilateral relationship. We will now receive comments. Oh, are you going to do that part about the comments? <laughs> I'm usurping her role. <laughs> we'll now receive comments by um, Minister Bostick, followed by Ambassador Tagliatella, and the acting Prime Minister will then make an address. I thank you for your attention. Mr. Bostick. Acting Prime Minister, Your Excellency and staff of the Embassy of the United States of America, Permanent Secretaries, Chief Medical Officer, Major Clark and Dr. Ferdinand, coordinators of the nation's vaccination program, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We are here another time, and each time that I come here, for me, represents a very big step forward in our quest to make vaccines available to all Barbadians and all residents of Barbados. And it's, it's a giant step given the current vaccine climate that we have globally. And so today takes us a bit far forward in this regard. I'm also very happy today because we're getting for the very first time a shipment and a donation of Pfizer vaccines. And I am very happy because this adds variety to what it is that we are offering. It gives people a choice, another choice. It provides also for the possibility of some of our students being able to access the vaccines if that decision is made at the appropriate level. So this is really a very, very good day indeed. And before I say anything else at all, Ambassador, I really would like to thank you sincerely on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, you and your team, for coordinating this aspect of it in order to get the vaccines here. I know that the Acting Prime Minister will extend other wishes later, but I think I, I, I needed to say that on behalf of the ministry that I'm responsible for. Thank you sincerely. I 
hope that this will now give us the chance to step up again in our fight to have Barbadians and residents of Barbados fully vaccinated. We started, we were going quite well, but we had to slow down. And the slowdown really was primarily a result of not, not having vaccines available to give people who wanted to have vaccines. And so I'm excited, really looking forward to the rollout of this tranche of vaccines. And I hope that all persons who can take the vaccine will make themselves available to be able to do so. And with those few words, once again, thank you, Ambassador, to you and your team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Bostic. We will now invite Her Excellency, Ambassador Tagli Lotella, to offer some remarks. Protocol having been established, I will proceed. I'd like to say good morning to all of you. I am here today as President Biden's personal representative to reaffirm our commitment to the health of the people of Barbados. The United States is proud to donate more than 70,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses free of charge to the people of Barbados. We thank the manufacturer of these vaccines, Pfizer, for their research and the work in making this donation possible. I also want to thank the people, my fellow workers in the United States government from the White House to the CDC to my own embassy, who have spent countless hours organizing a whole of government global health campaign to defeat the virus. I want to thank too the Prime Minister, the Acting Prime Minister, and Minister Bostic for their leadership and dedication in the fight against this pandemic. And I want to thank you, I want to say a thank you to everyone on your teams for your partnership in working with the United States and the international community to restore health and prosperity in the region. In order to stop COVID, we know we must work together. And I'm so thankful that we have such outstanding partners in the government of Barbados. President Biden has committed America to providing vaccines around the world. He understands and I understand that no one is safe until everyone is safe. Let me say that again. No one is safe until everyone is safe. That is why I'm proud that this vaccine donation complements the vaccines that the United States has already made available to Barbados through the COVAX faculty. Through COVAX and the $4 billion contribution the United States has made to the global vaccine effort, we helped deliver more than 100,000 AstraZeneca vaccines to Barbados in April and May. Now, in August, we are donating 70,000 more of the Pfizer vaccine. And why? Once again, because no one is safe until everyone is safe. The Pfizer vaccine is the only vaccine approved for use in children as young as 12 years old. All vaccines that the United States government donates are approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration and the World Health Organization. These are the same vaccines that are available to Americans and are the same doses that are being shared across the globe. We know Barbados takes this pandemic seriously, and we know that vaccines are the fastest way to end it. Yes, I live in the real world, and I know that there will be some who will seek to discredit and confuse. Faceless online accounts will spread mis- and disinformation. But the fact is, too many Barbadians, both on this island and in the United States, have died from COVID-19. Our cooperation today says that we choose science, facts, transparency, and saving lives. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the United States provided more than $4 million in COVID-19 response to the Eastern Caribbean. We have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars right here in Barbados providing PPEs, hygiene supplies, contact tracing training, and equipment. The United States and Barbados are partners and neighbors and remain the, remain the closest of friends. This is our shared neighborhood and we need to work together to and through time when we're able once again to greet each other with hugs, enjoy a line with close friends, and know that our families and friends are safe again. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ambassador. I'll now invite the Acting Prime Minister, Ms. Bradshaw, to address us at this time. My colleague, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, Your Excellency, Amb Ambassador Tagladati, Chief Medical Officer and Medical Officials, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Today I too am extremely happy to welcome all of you here to the Grantley Adams International Airport as you witness the receipt of a donation of more than 70,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine on behalf of the government and the people of Barbados. It was just yesterday, about 24 hours ago, that colleague Minister Bostic, myself, um, senior officials from the various ministries, foreign affairs, had the opportunity to meet with the Admiral Craig Fowler of the United States Southern Command to discuss strengthening ties between Barbados and the United States Army. We spoke about the long-standing relationship that would have existed and we also spoke about the fact that in order for friendships to be nourished, it is important that sometimes those who are in a better position to be able to assist reach out and provide the necessary assistance, especially when there is a time of need. There can be no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic has strained the resources of almost every single nation across the globe. But the reality is that we didn't all enter this crisis at the same time or on the same page or even with the same resources. And therefore the impact on each country has been different. This place is a moral obligation on those who are better off to lend a hand of support to those who may not be. In the Caribbean, with our tourism dependent economies, we've been hurt more than any other. With more world travel still a fraction of what it was pre-COVID times, we're still struggling to get back on our feet. But across the region since early last year, we determined as a region that we would not be defined by the struggle we face, but by the character of the people who we are. As a region, you would have seen us over the course of the last year, sharing vaccinations, sharing human resource personnel, sharing knowledge about the, the vaccine and certainly about the, the, in the healthcare um, fraternity. And we shared our test kits as well, because just last week we had to provide some test kits, I think down to Dominica. So we have been assisting each other as Caribbean neighbors. Whenever there's been shortages, we've come to the assistance of each other. We made sure that we operated by that old maxim, a friend in need is a friend indeed. I trust that this gift today, for which we are truly grateful ambassador, represents the rekindling of a Barbados United States relationship, indeed a CARICOM United States relationship that is far more representative of what we once enjoyed. Madam Ambassador, the government of Barbados looks forward to working with you and the Biden administration in order to achieve this. Relationships aside, however, though we cannot stray too far from the thing that has brought us here this morning, the gift of these 70,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, it is critically important to us because we are fully aware that despite how well we have done in managing the spread of the virus among our people, we are nowhere near where we should be at this time. Had we been living in a world where fairness and equity underpinned how we dealt with each other, things would no doubt have looked far different than they do now. Today, just over 34% of the world's population has received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and only 16% has been fully vaccinated. Globally, 4.54 billion doses have been administered, with 36.5 million now being administered every single day. But here is the challenge. Only 1.2% of people in low-income countries have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Can we ask for a more vivid picture of the challenge we face as a developing country than that? Is it at all possible that those of us with the power to make decisions do not recognize that as long as the ambassador also referred to that as long as one corner of the globe where the virus is ignored 
then the rest of us remain vulnerable so long as that is allowed to happen. Here in Barbados, for all of our successes, we've been able to provide the first dose of a vaccine to just over 100,000 persons and the second dose to almost 83,000. In essence, we've only covered about a third of our population. Today's donation, however, will provide us with the opportunity to re-inject some momentum into our vaccination program and we're certainly looking forward to that. I don't think the timing could even be better given that we're in the middle of consultations with the general public about vaccination and testing and I'm sure all of you are well aware of the vigorous debate and the various opin opinions that have been contending but the truth of the matter, we can do nothing unless we actually have the vaccinations available to us. The other thing we have to recognize as well is that it's not just about acquiring a vaccine. It is also about ensuring that small countries like ours have access to a variety of vaccines. For while we talk so much about vaccine hesitancy, we cannot ignore the fact that in many cases, individuals are not necessarily against the vaccine per se, but also want to have a choice as to which vaccine they should take. And to date, this has really only been possible in Barbados in a limited way. Today, we are pleased to say that we have options in relation to some of our vaccines. Achieving the herd immunity that we seek will be influenced by the ability of the consumer to choose the vaccine with which he or she is comfortable. That is a natural offshoot of people taking the opportunity to educate themselves on the subject and the government of Barbados will continue to work with our partners and our friends to try to provide Barbados with alternatives. We must be active on every front because our development trajectory has been so fundamentally altered by this pandemic that we cannot sit passively and hope for a turnaround. We have to do something. The achievement of our people's dreams and their aspirations are inextricably linked to getting our economy firing again on all cylinders as soon as possible. All across the world we are hearing in some countries borders have been closed and we're hearing the uptake in the number of cases in relation to variants and it is worrisome not only to other countries but it is worrisome here to us in Barbados. We still believe that the most effective way of fighting this virus is by having persons vaccinated. The next few months are going to be critical for us but today, with this donation, we can take fresh guard in this battle against COVID-19. A battle that is ours to win if we move forward together. I thank you. And thank you very much, Ms. Bradshaw. I'm not sure if there are any questions at this time. Marlon? I have two questions. Could you give us an idea what the expiration date on the vaccine and if we are actively considering giving children. Ms. Barja. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, in terms of our consideration of children, I think we've always said before that um, we will be guided by the science. Um, and the science obviously has indicated that certainly children from ages 12 were able to take the vaccination. Um, those matters are before the vaccination committee and we are awaiting their guidance in terms of how and when we can obviously be able to have that conversation with the public. I think in my um, other position as Minister of Education, I would have to say that nothing will happen in relation to vaccination unless there is consultation and the widest consultation with our stakeholders, in particular parents in this country, because I know that they have a number of anxieties about this whole exercise, even for themselves and taking the vaccination. But it is our intention that so long as we are able to have enough supply on island, that we are able to offer that to the wider population, and that includes certainly our students as well. I let um, Minister Bostic um, reference the first question for you. Uh, I regret to say that I don't have the dates that you're asking about because we just received the vaccines and we can get back to you later with that information, but I'm not privy to that at this point in time. Sorry about that. And to clarify, There's 70,000, two, three, 200. Yeah, and there'll be three, two other shipments um, of that. Good morning, Minister. Can you say if you had to make any special arrangements in terms of storage of this vaccine? 
Yes, we, we, certainly, we certainly do, and we have prepared for that. We have the adequate storage capacity, um, bearing in mind that this vaccine um, operates at a different temperature than the others that we've had before, and we have everything in place to be able to store the vaccines, yes. I'm not sure myself. I think to suffice to say um, that, you know, we've waited long for the other shipments to come. And, you know, with everything that is happening globally, it is difficult really to say sometimes. I think what our focus is right now with these 70,000 plus is to really be able to roll out a program where we can see a greater uptake by Barbadians of taking, wanting to take the vaccine at this point. And the truth is, I was having a conversation with the CMO earlier, that regardless of all of the vaccine hesitancy, a number of people are still contacting the Ministry of Health and all the public health officials uh, requesting that, you know, they get an appointment in order to take it. I must say as well that with this vaccine, um, the time frame in terms of being fully vaccinated is obviously considerably shorter than even the AstraZeneca. And I think that that is perhaps um, is going to, to be what is going to motivate people as well to get it done. Whether the persons are traveling, whether they're going off to university, um, I believe the window is about four weeks now for, um, from first shot to second shot. And I think that's going to make a considerable difference in terms of people having to wait a long period, um, but rather being able to have a short a period now that they can take this particular vaccine. Um, yes, um, I, we would have indicated before that there were several clusters, most of the clusters that are inactive. Um, the cluster of concern at the moment remains um, what we ca call the bar cluster, um, starting with the wedding locally and then some bar hopping. Um, that cluster is still growing. I believe my last count, I haven't seen today's results as yet, but my last count was about 49. And, but we've been able to contain to the extent that we have, the contact tracing process has been going very, very well. And to be honest, I would like to compliment those persons who were positive for really sharing information that has made it very much easier for us. And we've been able to quarantine persons, quarantine families in order to contain the spread. But that is the one major uh, cluster we're looking at at this point in time. And then only yesterday we started to see the development of uh, another family cluster that we are watching. But um, we are on top of things where these clusters are concerned. Um, there have been some concerns recently about Right. Um, fortunately, um, the delays on this occasion, I remember we had some issues back in December, January, and those issues primarily were at the lab. But the delays that we've been having, the lab has been processing the, the samples, but the delays had to do with some technical issues that we've had um, even within the airport itself and where the persons operate, we've had to get some upgrades from the provider um, to be able to get more um, bandwidth. And also uh, there was a, a, a particular issue with uh, the entering the, the, the information on what we call the SHAPE app that was causing a bit of a difficulty again because of the, the, the bandwidth situation. And then we've had two occasions where the Ministry of Information, Science and Technology, the, the system was out for an entire day because of issues with the provider. And once we have that, that is going to impact operations. And so there has been de a delay in getting some of those results back. But I can assure you that we've met, the, for the most part, the 24-hour um, criteria in relation to getting back the test results but in some cases because the information was not available to send back those results some people had some delays there were not that many but we've been doing very well for the last few days
But just add to um, what Mr. Bostick has said that, you know, we've also had issues with people entering incorrect information into the app as well. Um, so it's not just the technology alone, although technology and, and being able to connect is a big part of it. Um, but those are all teething issues that we're working through. I think I also want to, you know, let the public also know that this airport wasn't built for a COVID environment. The truth of the matter is that we've had to make a lot of logistical arrangements in order to accommodate um, the flow of traffic through this airport. And so the gates that we're using even now to receive passengers, um, the Wi-Fi is adequate if it was um, having the persons who it was intended for. But obviously we're seeing a different flow of traffic through the, those particular locations based, based on what the public health officials have advised us to do. So we've had to increase capacity um, in terms of bandwidth connectivity. We've had to make sure that we, we, we um, test in, in terms of inserting areas that would not ordinarily have been built out for that purpose. And so I think we, we need to talk the country through the changes that have had to be made in order for people to appreciate that, yes, there may be delays from time to time, but the delays sometimes are not deliberate. There are obviously logistical issues and you know cost issues that we are trying to grapple with in order to make the process of coming through the airport an enjoyable one because nobody more than us understand how important it is that when you come to Barbados you want to feel as though you know this is your first time on island in some cases and you want that the process of coming through Grantley Adams International Airport is a good one so we're trying our best to basically settle a lot of those issues in terms of the Wi-Fi but just to say that sometimes it is not just the issues of Wi-Fi and bandwidth um, we have to deal with the issues of verification by passengers of their information and sometimes the information goes to the wrong address. So we're working through those um, those difficulties and hopefully as we get the increase of additional passengers, we will be able to um, make that process for them a little bit more comfortable. I am not aware um, that they've been charged, I suspect that it may be in some cases a deterrent to the persons who um, you now realize that Barbados is a bit more serious about persons who pre present false um, certificates. But we have to be real, I mean, it's, it's not just happening in Barbados, I mean, it's happening across the world. Um, people don't necessarily like the idea of all of these um, changes that have had to be made in terms of being able to move from one country to the other, and people will always find ways around it. Um, but we have certainly sent the message to the rest of the world and certainly to the region that those who travel and do so in such a way that they break our laws um, and put our people at risk will certainly be dealt with. Um, have we had to dump any vaccine and could you give an idea if we are running too close to the expiration of the first vaccine? Mm -hmm. And if you want to talk to Dr. Ferdinand, you can answer? Yeah. yeah. No, we have not dumped any vaccines and we've been coordinating really well I must say and that is why the gap between first doses and second doses you see we have about 20,000 or so in terms of the numbers and that is because people would have come um, at a later time as a result of vaccines being made available um, some time ago so we are on top of it um, we have vaccines to cover those who have to get their second dose and we are just moving in the right direction, but the answer is no, we haven't dumped vaccines. Uh, again, I want to just um, thank you, Ambassador, and certainly to the people of the United States of America and certainly to the government as well for this donation. Um, I really think we sincerely appreciate the contribution. Um, and just to reiterate that our relationship by this donation and certainly all the work that you've been doing uh, will continue to strengthen our ties with the United States of America. Thank you. And as we close, let me just thank the Acting Prime Minister, the Honorable Santia Bradshaw, the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel, the Honorable Jeffrey Bostick, U.S. Ambassador, Her Excellency, Ambassador Linda Taglia-Latella, members of the media, especially invited guests, for joining. Good morning.